All right, we're getting into the fabrication of the downpipe, and all I really did was mark about two inches off of each piece that I used, which was 290 degrees and 145 degree, and I, I cut off two right. inches from each. Got the downpipe test fitted, clears pretty much everything except for this right here. I got to move this wiring out of the way, but I'm just going to tack weld everything and then pull it off and then weld her up. And then we'll probably end up putting our O2 sensor probably somewhere right around here. Let me reiterate guys that I am not a welder. I just know how to put two pieces of pipe together and make sure they do not come apart. Um, I'm not really into the whole fabricating thing. Sometime in the future I will be looking to hire somebody to do most of my fabricating. But I can put two pieces of metal together and it comes out I'd say it comes out okay. Also, all I'm going to do is cover it in pretty exhaust wrap anyway, so as long as it doesn't leak, it, it's good to me. And there you have it guys, the finished product. It doesn't look pretty, but it also doesn't leak, and that's all that matters to me. Now we get into the next day. Good morning guys, it is early. Um, today, sorry, I got a little bit of allergies. Um, yeah, I don't have COVID. <laughs> but, um, so I got in a hurry. I lost, uh, I lost my boost gauge and I went down to the store. I'll show you guys. Went down to the local auto parts store and I <clears throat> picked up the cheap little Bosch one. I don't really like it. It's not liquid filled. So I got a replacement that I'm going to put in there. That's pretty simple. You just unplug it from the vacuum line, plug in the other one. And then also my AFR gauge is right there on the dash. And I've already drove it once and looking at that one and then looking at that one it's, it's, I missed uh, I missed it so I'm gonna put this one right up here to where I can see it that way I'm not looking down and then up and try to see you know if my AFR is good or if I'm you know my boost is good so I'll put that in there and then I might at a later date install a fuel pressure gauge all right guys Here's the one that I'm putting in. I've used this one before and I like it. Um, like I said, I just got the little cheap Bosch one that you can get from an auto parts store. Fairly simple, all we do is take our little gauge pod. Show you guys real quick. Turn it on. Here we go. All right, so we're getting ready to install our catch can system, and I saw this um, this idea on another forum. I thought it was pretty cool. Instead of doing what we did last time, um, it uses AN fittings, but it uses the um, the oil fill. So it's got an oil fill adapter to AN. I got uh, oil fill adapter to 10 AN fitting. And what it does is it utilizes two passenger side valve covers. So I pulled this one off with another motor. We're going to use this to install our, uh, our catch can. So all it does is of course we'll take this card off right here but see this right here take this fitting which i thought was pretty cool and wasn't that expensive either um take this fitting screws on here there you have it look so you don't got to drill anything um and then we run this to our catch can i thought that was pretty cool so all we're going to do is swap valve covers and then put these fittings on, 
Find a place to mount our catch can, and then that's it, tie the lines together. Found where I'm gonna mount it. There was a, a battery holding an area right here, but our battery's back there, so all I did was pull it out. And I'm just gonna use those two spots right there to put our fabricated bracket in there. There it is right there. It's okay. Time to do the other side. Now for our 10 millimeter bolts, get our coil pack bracket off. All right, so this is the first time I've pulled the valve cover off on this thing. And looks pretty good in there. So I can get the light flashing just right so y'all can see. Let's do this. Uh, yeah. Look, looks real good. I've seen a lot worse on a lot of different motors. But remember guys, this one has 300 plus thousand miles. So, and I swear to you, it doesn't run like it. All right guys, same, uh, sorry, same thing with this side. I'm not gonna clean the valve cover up or anything and I'll tell you why in a future video. Got a surprise, hint, hint. But um, screw the adapter in. Simple as that. No, we gotta keep it classy with some zip ties. If you guys wanna use the catch can that I use, I will put the link in the description. Now that we got the line done, Catch can is routed. All I gotta do is put on this pull pack bracket. And then we are finished with our catch can mod. What's up guys? So we've been driving our truck for about two days, about a day and a half, uh, trying to tune with the stock fuel pump stock injectors. And those stock injectors are not having it. Uh, we, we were, we we're not even running high boost up. We're at four and a half, about four and a half pounds of boost. And those stock injectors are already at like 140, 150% duty cycle. And I didn't even get it to get to take it up all the way full, you know, all the way up to the RPM range. I think uh, I was probably right around 55, 5,600 and they're already well over maxed out. So we're gonna go ahead and install some decapped injectors. These are, our decapped injectors. I got our connector adapters for the truck. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and run those. All right guys, let's get to it. All right guys, real quick. These right here, couldn't you really get a good look in the video, are our decapped injectors. These are brand new injectors. These are not 100,000, 200,000 mile injectors. These are brand new. These are our go-to injectors. Um, we do have 850 and 1000 cc injectors, but these are the ones that we like to start with first. They are very reliable. Um, a lot of the, the bad rep comes from people using them that, um, you know, used. They buy them used and, you know, they, they had 100,000 miles on them or however many thousands of miles on them and they go out or the flow isn't right But these ones are brand new. They are flow tested. They are leak tested um, And they do carry a warranty. So just want to throw that in there because I forgot to mention that mention that in the video All right, so I didn't think I had to show you guys how to remove the fuel injectors, you know, the fuel rail, whatever. So we are going to skip right over that and go to... There it is, guys. This is why 
we have to run our connector adapters because these ones are let's see if it'll focus EV6. So after installing all these new parts, man, it makes me want to clean up the engine bay. Like I got a, a shiny turbo, you know, new intercooler piping and all that. And don't get me wrong, you know, everything on here works, you know, but now I want a, a brand new coolant reservoir that isn't, you know, stained yellow. You know, a nicer looking intake manifold, you know, just because it looks nice, right? It's really hard not to. Almost done. Um, getting these fuel rail bolts tight. And then we got to uh, load a base tune and then go, go tuning. Uh, tuning, that's the consuming part, especially when you switch over to um, uh, speed density. You're not, I'm not running a mass airflow anymore, so. Well guys, the camera died and I didn't get to finish making that video. We basically installed the injectors and loaded our base tune in. Now we're about to go do some test driving and some tuning. So stay tuned for the next video for our test drive and more updates on the project truck. Alright guys, catch you on the next one.